All right, let's get started. I want to share with you a interactive infographic that I created a few years back for somebody. Um, I want to share with you what I created, how I created it, um, and why I created it. So let's get started. Active infographic um, I created for WatchGuard. Um, I wanted to help them find a way to take a, a, a more or less not boring, but a long read, uh, Microsoft Word document. I think it was a white paper or something. And uh, they, they were covering how cyber criminals are hiding in various businesses and government agencies and organizations. So I wanted to share with them a fun way of producing um, what might otherwise be a standard infographic. Um, so I used uh, Adobe Illustrator to start and created sort of a little mini town, a little, a little main street, if you will. Um, so, you know, just sort of created a backscape or whatever. And then what, what you do is you draw, you draw all the components to create your city. And actually, I first sketched it out on a piece of paper, roughly, so I had some general idea of what I wanted to do. Shared that with them, just so I'm not wasting time, you know, creating like the hard hat construction company. Um, you know, what do we have here? Because, you know, we have to correlate the data that they have along with the illustration that, that I create. So I run that basic idea by them, sort of a rough map, if you will, before I start doing the illustration work in Adobe Illustrator. Um, so as you can see here, we have the, the general town, you know, the little trees and lights and cars and, you know, people at work. I even added the, uh, the little watch guard logo on the, uh, on the van there. Little, little fun little touches like that. Um, so it's kind of fun, kind of fun to build this. Took me a couple of days to put this together. And then we started assembling the content. Um, so, for example, you know, some of the content was uh, legal break-ins into illegal offices of Jordan, Smith & Locke um, as part of one of their case studies. So once that was illustrated, then I bring it over into um, Adobe InDesign where I can create a pretty robust interactive graphic or interactive document. So in Illustrator, I created these little rollover markers that you see with a little finger just to show people that uh, you can in fact roll over it. And we added this little text over here, scroll over the hotspots in the town to see how cybercrime hits little guys. Only works with Adobe Acrobat, which is true. Adobe Acrobat has the engine and the ability to f make it fully functional, the interactivity, since they make most of the cool uh, designer tools anyway. Um, I think most everybody has Adobe Acrobat. So, so that's what we did. And then what we do is uh, we create the interactivity in InDesign. We create the rollover here where you can see where you roll over a hotspot and you can read, read the content. So you can see this pop up here is this particular data that has to do with um, this Bjorn Manufacturing Company. Um, to talk about the um, the security ha uh, hack that happened, the uh, um, the zero day vulnerability supply chain management software, I think it was. But anyway, this here. So I'll, I'll roll over each of these, and you can see all of the content and data that now you can interact with, which is pretty cool because you can you can absorb it one piece at a time instead of one big long infographic. So we just basically, and you see the little graphics that are that are inside there, um, the little credit card with a bug on it. You know, create that in Illustrator as well, and bring that into these little components. The box that you see there is created in InDesign. All of the type and fontography and everything is all created in InDesign, which is great because then you can edit it very easily in in uh, Adobe InDesign and make changes very very easily and export export the same exact interactive gra uh, graphic PDF over and over. And I think it only took three or four rounds of edits, simple edits, to, uh, to perfect this project. But, but you can see there's probably, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of content that are on this graphic. So otherwise, it'd be a very tall, long uh, in, uh, infographic. And this just made it fun. And this, this got a lot, of, uh, a lot of views, I guess and uh, was definitely well seen across uh, a lot of different channels. I think they promoted it on their social media, email, campaigns, and I think on their website as well. But it's just another fun example, another way 
to create an interactive, uh, actually not even interactive, another way of creating a great graphic or visual, uh, visual content in an interactive format, which is, I think, way cooler. And you, you know, the beauty too is that it's a, it's a vector graphic. So I'll zoom in here. Whoa, zoom in a little too far there. But if you zoom into any any vector graphic, you can see that it's super high resolution. So you don't have to worry about losing quality. Um, I mean, we could technically drill in here and create a cool video animation of this as well. Um, you see, it's just very, very high resolution. Um, so, so just another another great tool, something that uh, that you can use um, for almost any any document. And uh, you know, it seems like it's really complex, and it it really isn't. If you if you know how to work with it and you know how to create it, it's it's really not that much different than an infographic. It might be a little more expensive, but in the end, I think you can really make this get a lot more leverage and a lot more um, depth and exposure than a regular infographic will. So this is one example of an interactive infographic using Adobe InDesign and Illustrator.